Welcome to a tutorial video on ink. In this video, I'm going to talk about working with variables. When we think of programming languages, there are two major categories of things we care about. Comments and keywords. Comments are notes for other humans, and we write them, like in many other programming languages in ink, with two slashes and then whatever words we want. So, note to myself. Oop, and make sure we spell myself correctly. The other thing we care about other than comments, notes to other humans, are keywords. Keywords in programming languages are things that stand for more than just the word itself. They are key, hence keyword. So we've already seen when we're dealing with ink that ink uses special symbols as part of its keywords. We already saw when working with knots that we used two equal signs in front of the name of a knot and two equal signs behind it to create the knot. So the equal signs were part of its keywords, things that mean more than their apparent uh, information or value. We also saw that slashes with comments are another example of that. So we can create comments using these slashes as part of its keywords. Well, when we're working with variables, we care about a particular type of keyword, and then we're going to talk about some special symbols to deal with it. So in this video, I'm going to talk about creating variables, showing their values, and then changing their values. So let's start with creating variables. So again, I mentioned keywords at the top of this video because it's something we want to care about. When we want to create a variable in ink, we use a special keyword called var, V-A-R in all capital letters, V-A-R. After this, we need to give it a name. Variable names in ink actually follow the same rules as variable names in all other programming languages. So once we learn these rules, we can remember them and use them with other programming languages. So the rules are the following. We can use any combination of letters, so upper and lower case, any combination of numbers, and we can also use the underscore. So three rules, any combination of letters, any combination of numbers, the underscore, but, and this is the thing that most important rule, but no other special symbols and no spaces. So we can't have spaces in the name of variables. And these rules apply to all other programming languages as well. So when we want to create a variable in ink then, we need to think about what we are storing. Variables have values. They are ways of saving data while a program is running. So we save values in variables. So we're creating a variable in ink. We're using the keyword var, V-A-R, all uppercase and we need to give it a name. Well, for the sake of this tutorial, I will call it example. So notice I'm still getting an error right here, and it says expected the equal sign for an assignment. Well, that's the other thing we need to remember. So the rules of creating variables in ink are, we use a special keyword var, V-A-R, all uppercase, we then give it a name, names, variable names follow the rules of variable names across all programming languages, which is to say it can have any combination of letters, any combination of numbers, the underscore, but no other special characters and especially no spaces. So when we create a variable in ink, the last thing we need to sort of keep in mind is that we assign it a value. So variables aren't particularly useful unless we give it a value. One of the ways we can think about variables are actually buckets. So imagine if you've ever been to the beach, or if you haven't, maybe you're in a sandbox or some other setting like that, and there's lots of sand all over the place. Well, sand is like data, right? You put it into the bucket, and then the bucket holds it. It is a container for the data. It's the same with variables. So the bucket's not terribly useful unless it's containing something. The same thing with variables. Variables contain values, so a variable by itself without something in it, without a value, is not particularly useful. We just sort of have an empty bucket. And ink doesn't want you doing that because it doesn't want empty buckets all over the place. So it says, hey, you've started to create a bucket, a variable here. You need to give it a value. So we give it a value using the equal sign and then some value. So the equal sign and then some value here. Possible values we could use as, or possible values we can use to put in the bucket of these variables are numbers or various other things. So for this right here, I'm gonna use the number one. 
Now notice as soon as it becomes valid, I have no issues and there are no errors here. So I'm gonna press the enter key a couple of times, give myself some space. So I started this with a comment, that's the first line. Then we have a variable, that's the second line. We're creating the variable with a special keyword var, V-A-R, all uppercase. We have a name of the variable, again, maintaining those rules of any combinations of letters, any combinations of numbers, the underscore, but no other special characters and especially no spaces. Spaces is a special character or a special symbol. Then we also assign it a value. Again, thinking about the buckets, right? We have all of this sand, all of this data. We want to put it in something and we can't just have an empty bucket sitting around. So we put the sand, we put the data in this case, give it a value inside the bucket and we give a value to the variable. So we don't want all those empty buckets sitting around. So we have a variable that has a value. So that was the first step of this video. We created a variable. The second one is that we now need to show this value. We get to do something with it, right? We have this bucket, we have this data, we want to do something with the bucket, right? So if we were at the beach, or if we were at a sandbox, maybe we could tip the bucket over and use the bucket shape to show what was in it, right? We said, okay, we flip the bucket over, maybe we create a sand castle in the sandbox, we create a, a shape on the beach. So in this case, to show what's in this bucket, to show what's in this variable, we need to use curly brackets. So like a lot of other keywords in ink, this uses special symbols. And we just sort of need to get used to using them. So I want to show the value of the variable named example. I do that using curly brackets in ink. So Curly brackets tells ink that whatever is in the curly brackets is actually code and not text. So this is a difference ink cares about. Ink again is a narrative scripting language. It cares about narrative, about words, right? Lots of words going on. We're creating a story. So we say, we tell ink, hey, these, this stuff, this text is obviously part of the story. And notice it automatically shows up over here on the right-hand side, so this is text. I want to show code, so in which case, I want to use open and closing curly brackets. And it says, okay, well, these are empty again. So what I want to put in, example. Notice I use the name of the variable to refer to that value, one. So the number one was assigned as a value to the variable example. I'm now showing the value of that variable. The value of example is one. So again, we're tipping that bucket over and now we're showing what's in that bucket, right? We put data in the bucket and now we're flipping the container, flipping the variable as, you, as, a, as a metaphor here and showing its value. So we have this text, the text of the story. Then we're using a little bit of code in curly brackets to show the value of the variable. So finally, the last thing I want to talk about is changing the values of variables. So we can create them using var, keyword, V-A-R, all uppercase. Then the name of the variable, again, remembering the, name, the rules for names of variables, which are, exist across all programming languages. So once we learn it, we, we know it forever. And then we assign it a value. And then we saw on line four right here, we can show the value of a variable using curly brackets around it. So the very last thing we want to do then is change the value of a variable. So again, variables as part of its name have its roots in a little bit of Greek and a little bit of English. So in Greek uh, var or uh, you may see variants or other words based on this basically means change, things that can change or are capable of change. And in English, able, you know, some, someone is able to do something means a capacity for something or capacity or ability. So a variable is change, the first part of the word, and able or capacity or ability. So the ability to change. So a variable is something that can change. doesn't have to, but it can. So we want to change the value of a variable, which is part of its name, right? Able to be changed. So we do that in ink using a special keyword, just like a lot of other special symbols we've seen, like the equal sign we saw with assignment. We also saw a part of it with creating knots, and we've seen it with selective output. Ink really loves special symbols for things. Well, the special symbol we use for changing the value of the variable, or one of the ways we can do it, in fact, is through something called the tilde. The tilde shows up on keyboards as the key above the tab key on most keyboards. 
So we use that by pressing shift and then that key and we get the tilde. So we put tilde and then a space and it just like we have an issue here, it says, hey, I expected something, but all I see is this little tilde. So just like we use the curly brackets to show some code, we can use the tilde to have one line of code. So this one line of code, only line six, we can then put some code in. So what code do we want to use? Well, we want to change the value of the variable. The variable starting on line two was assigned the value of one. We want to reassign a value. So we can think of reassignment and assignment, again, as putting that, putting that sand in the bucket. We're putting this data, the values we want, into a container. And in this case, we're putting the values putting the value of one inside the container of example. Then on line four, we tip that bucket over and we said, hey, this is the thing that's in it. Or if you prefer, maybe looking in the bucket is a better example there. We said, okay, what's in this bucket? Oh, okay, it's the value one. In this case, we're gonna, nope, I wanna change what's in this bucket. So just like we did on line two, I'm gonna write example, the name of the variable I wanna change. Then I'm going to reassign it using the equal sign to a new value two. So notice line six has the tilde that starts the line. Then we says example is equal to two. So the line two, so the value two on line six, the line two creates the variable example is equal to the number one. So assigns it the value one. Line four shows that value with the curly brackets around the name of the variable line four. Line six changes the value of the variable. Notice the tilde, it's a little special fun character. At the beginning of line six, we have a space and then the code I want, this code is change example to equal to the number two. Finally, if I wanted to show the new value of example, put curly brackets around it and now we have the number two. Notice the code ran in order, starting on line one, which was a comment, a note to myself. Then we saw line two created the variable, line four showed the variable, line six changed the value of the variable, and then line eight showed the value again. In this case, it had already changed. It changed on line six, and by the time it made it to line eight, its value had already been changed. And so it showed the new updated value. The very last thing I wanna talk about is sometimes we wanna store words. Words in ink are special. So instead of storing the number one, I want to store some words. Words, words, words. So I do that, and I'll put a words, words, words. Notice I'm using quotation marks. So similar to how we might cite a source if we're writing a paper for English or something like that, we want to get the exact thing the author said. So in this case, the exact thing I typed, I put in quotation marks. So same rules apply. I put words, words, words. In this case, though, notice as soon as I put it in quotation marks right here, starting on line two right here, quotation marks and quotation marks, the exact thing I put in quotation marks, the exact order in the exact sequence, words comma words comma words showed up on right here line four because this is the value i put in this variable so anything i put within this quotation marks on line two notice it showed on line four right over here this text words 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 notice i could also change the value of the variable on line six i changed it back to a number and then it just showed that number on line eight ink doesn't actually care about the type of the data, so the type of the value. It could be words, notice the quotation marks around them. So again, just like we're writing a paper, that exact thing that the author said, we put the exact thing in quotation marks, or it could be a number as on line six. Ink doesn't actually care. As long as we follow its rules, so we use creating a variable starting with the keyword var, V-A-R, all uppercase, we name things correctly following the rules of variable naming, then we assign it a value. It doesn't actually care what thing we, we assign it. Just like we're putting those, putting that sand in the bucket, it's all kind of sand. Ink doesn't really care. As long as we follow the rules that it has and the special symbols it wants, it doesn't care what values we need. So any type of sand we could put in that bucket, any type of values we can put in that variable.
We can also change it again on line six to any type of value. It could be a number, it could be some words, as long as the words are in quotation marks, it's for that exact thing we wanted and ink doesn't really care that much. And so this is kind of an important thing to know when working with variables in ink is we can give them all kinds of different values. And as we'll see in future videos and in future examples, this can get incredibly interesting because we can start to change the values of variables in reaction to choices users make. So they can choose locations or choose different things. Maybe they're maybe we show an interface to a inventory or we show maybe they're at a shop and they're buying different things and they're spending money and we can start to adjust those values. So the exciting thing about ink when using variables is we can store pretty much anything, right? We can store numbers, we can store words, as long as we use quotation marks, of course. And then we can start to manipulate those values, starting as an example here on line six. So we'll start to look at more complex examples of using these three concepts, creating variables, showing variables, and changing their values in future videos and in future examples, building on these concepts.